Hello. How you doing? Today I wanted to talk about this little beauty here. This is the 24 to 70 F4 S for the Z line. And this is the kit lens. So it comes with your camera. It's very affordable when you buy it with the camera. I think it's something like four or five hundred dollars more rather than buying separately where it's twice the price. So buying it with the Z6 or the Z7 is a great idea. And hopefully, maybe they might bundle it with the Z50 because that would be, what, a 24? So that would make it a uh, 12, 25, 36. That's a weird focal length. A 36 to basically a 105. That's kind of a good lens. It's a 35 to 105, basically. I think they should bundle this with the Z50. So today, I want to talk about it. Kit lens. It's extraordinarily compact. It's tiny. And it does have this, uh, this little mechanism here. I don't know why I can't get it to work. There it is. It does have this mechanism. This style of mechanism where it pops out before you can use it. And then it zooms. Now, not my favourite. Don't love that it's kind of locked. But once you get used to it, and you just kind of do it automatically, probably after the first 20 times. But the advantage of it is it's an extraordinarily compact lens. So I've had this lens now for a year because I got it with my Z7 from the start. And up until only about two months ago, it was the only Z lens that I had. So I used it for everything. And it is a very versatile lens. And I'll tell you why. So when you're shooting video, you've got your 24 to 70. But with the Z6 and the Z7, you can shoot in DX mode, which means you crop and you get that extra focal length. So you get that 35, 6 to 105, which gives you that extra reach. So it makes it a very useful lens for capturing all sorts of things. And obviously you can do that with stills if you want to. With video, you don't lose any resolution. It's still 4K if you want it to be with stills you do but you still got a lot i can't remember the number i'll write it down here 20 16 somewhere around there megapixels still which is a lot so that makes it a very versatile lens you can map the swapping between cropped and non-cropped to a button i think never done it probably can let's look into that i might look into that now we begin by jumping into the custom setting menu and then control custom control assignment and these are all the different buttons on the camera that you can choose from and I choose the sub selector center button because I don't use it for anything else and I use that in video and stills and then I've mapped the frame size to that button and then these are all the different options that you can map to any button which is just amazing all the different things you can change and do a high level of customization which makes it very easy and then this is what we can see when we're in stills mode because you can't capture the HUD when you're on uh, video mode of course that makes sense and by pressing the button I've selected we can change from FX as we're in stills mode you can see there's the extra crop versions but when you're in video there's only FX and DX and uh, there you have it. You can see that the frame is changing size from a close-up view to a wider view. So that is awesome. And of course, the capacity to uh, increase your lens by a 1.5 crop when shooting in 4K is that easy and that quick. One of the great things I love about the Z7, which I'm sure is the same as the Z6, is you have separate controls for when you're in stills mode and when you're in movie mode so you can choose to map it to that button for just when you're in video but not to map it to that button when you're in stills amazing i've done it for both because i don't mind flipping between the two so yes you can literally just prob i'm not even sure if you can do it while you're shooting i should try is uh you hit you hit a button a bit like on your iphone where you just change between cameras seamlessly this it's cropping the sensor and suddenly you've got a, a 1.5 teleconverter built in because of the way you can use the frame. Great, love it, so good. Now talking about the size of the lens, here, here is the 24 to 70, here is the 50 
So you can see that they're, they're identical in height. Now I am confident that Nikon has made these sorts of decisions deliberately. So it's a beautiful compact lens. Man, I love these two lenses, it's so good. But just wanted to show you that it's exactly the same size as the 50 mil. Feels very similar in weight too. I'll look that up. So yeah, I'll show you some stills uh, from this lens. Obviously we know that, uh, that the 50 mil is considered one of the best lenses possible today, right now. I'm sure it'll be superseded, everything is, but right now, this sub $1,000 lens is considered one of the best lenses you can buy at the moment. This lens is amazing too. And everything I did on the Z7 up until uh, two months ago, so for the first 10 months of me owning it, was on this, unless I was using the F to Z, which happened a little bit, but it only happened kind of 10% of the time. An amazing all round lens, and you just simply can't go wrong. And the only, the only reason you might not be excited about it is because it's an F4, not an F1.8. So you don't get uh, those extra however many stops that is. It's like three stops. It's quite a difference in light and depth of field. But it's cheaper and it zooms and it's very versatile. With your DX crop, you could probably pretty much survive with this as a travel lens and it would cover most of what you do. Now, as an aside, when I travelled to Europe last year, I had the 24-105 Sony uh, F4 on my A7R3. And Nikon have now announced their F4 24-105. It's coming. That is a more versatile lens and it gives you even more reach. Then you can go out to 100, 150, whatever it is, 155 on the long end uh, if you go into DX. And that's quite a sizable zoom it will be a little bit larger, and I will show you. So here, here is the A7R3 with the G24-105. And look, uh, Nikon will design these differently, so they won't be identical. That's what the 24-70 looks like versus the 24 to 105, I suspect Nikons will be the same size, or very, very similar. So, as you can see, this is very compact and very light, this one here. This one's gonna be a bit bigger, but an even better travel lens, which is coming. It's on the roadmap, it's formally on the roadmap, the Nikon version of this lens here, which is a great travel lens. Really, you can get away, if, if you're not sort of going to capture things that you might hope to one day sell, but just a, a general, uh, lens to capture family and moments and everything else under the sun. A lens like this is amazing. And if you do have VR or IBIS or IS, then the F4 becomes not really a problem, which of course this has and the Z6 and the Z7 have. A great lens, a great travel lens. For now, I would recommend probably their best travel lens because there isn't a lot of choices at the moment. But when that uh, 24 to 105 comes out, another great option. So I just want to go through some files and capture one. You can have a look at what they look like uh, recorded with this. So let's go through those now. Okay, so here we are. This is, as we can see here, if we go to info, just down here, where is it hiding? I can, there it is. This is the Nikkor Z 24 to 70 F4S on the Z7, and this particular image photographed at 1 60th of a second, f4, and if we look over here, it's at 24.5 mils. Now here I'm at the Australian Open, watching some lovely tennis being played. I don't remember, who was I watching? Ah yes, it was Novak Djokovic. So we're zooming into 100%, and you can see here in the middle of frame, this is nice and sharp. And it's look, it's F4, and this is a very large space. So it's, I'm not exactly sure where focus was. It was probably center court. That's 200%, let's go 100%. Yeah, that's looking sharp, certainly looking sharp in the middle. It's looking pretty sharp up there, which is quite a fair way behind. Obviously, the lens is very wide at 24.5mm. It's basically fully wide open. And yeah, it's looking pretty good on the edges. Obviously here we have no idea because it's further back 
but this is looking pretty sharp. And this is all looking pretty good through here. Again, we are at 100%. So pixel for pixel, the birds and the wires, they're looking good. So if you like a bit of tennis, the Australian Open in January, it's summertime, it's a beautiful time of year, Melbourne's looking great. So that's a lovely rendition from the camera. So let's jump to another one, which is this one here. This was taken after I left the tennis. ISO 320, one sixth of a second handheld F4. Obviously we've got the in-body stabilization. 56 millimeter lens going to 100%. So the stairs are looking sharp as you could imagine. One sixth of a second handheld. People are moving, they're blurry, so that's fine. And again, that's looking good. Looking really good. Very happy with what I'm seeing there as an F4 lens. Not a very expensive lens, looking great. What's in focus is the boat. We are at 1 one hundredth of a second. I'm shooting at ISO 31, 54 mil, 5.6. But this has got a tremendous depth of field for 5.6. Look at this, this is in focus. So we're at 100%, there's the whole frame. At 100%, this boat's in focus. This is in pretty good focus too, back here in the background. Obviously, these buildings, which are about five kilometers away, something like that, they're a bit soft, but still pretty good. We've actually got some heat haze happening here. A bit of heat haze. But that's reasonably sharp, I reckon. So that's, that's looking great, and it's really resolving all of that information well. And here we're seeing the edge sharpness. And right over to the side of frame here, this is sharp. We are a pixel for pixel. So that's great. Looking really great. Bit harder to pick the corners, but this is all looking lovely here. So I'm pretty happy with what I'm seeing there. For the rest of this film, I'm just gonna show you a slideshow and some images recorded by this lens. I think it's a cracker. I think it looks great. So please enjoy. So as always, thank you so much for watching. It has been so fantastic to see you today. Uh, if you're not a subscriber, please subscribe. Then we can see each other again. That'd be great. Uh, please share, because it makes us all smarter. And uh, please like, because that helps get the word out there. Great lenses, great cameras, you can't go wrong. And I'd love to know your thoughts. What do you think of the 24-70 F4? Do you have one? Do you want one? I would have thought, most people, when buying a Z6 or a Z7, would have gone the kit. Uh, if you didn't, I certainly recommend it for next time. When you buy a kit lens, it always comes at a severe discount. And so it's the best way when getting into a new system to get new glass. And it's, it's often an all-rounder lens, but that's a great way to get started. And it's a great lens for travel and parties. They always are. So tell me your thoughts. Would you go the 24 to 70 F4? So this episode has been photographed with the Nikon 35mm 1.8S. Part of the Z line, which of course can go on the uh, Z50, Z6 and Z7. And I am loving this gorgeous out of focus background. Thanks for watching and I really look forward to seeing you soon.